Hey there, everybody. I'm Nick Ravellis, the Geisel Director of Education and Outreach, but you can call me Dr. Nick. Our first opera of the 2013 season is Gaetano Donizetti's The Daughter of the Regiment. Now, just based on the title, can you imagine what this opera is about? Think about it in a minute. You're right. It's about a girl who's been raised since birth by a regiment of soldiers. The backstory is that when the soldiers were in battle, they came across a little bundle on the battlefield and it turned out to be a baby girl. So they adopt her, raise her as their own, and simply take her from place to place as they go about the rather difficult business of waging war and going into battle. And that seems pretty far-fetched, doesn't it? Well, guess what happened just a couple of weeks ago in southern Afghanistan? A patrol of soldiers from Poland who were working with international forces there were walking down a deserted road and saw something off to the side. They were afraid it might be an explosive device, but they inspected it and discovered, much to their surprise, a brand new infant girl. They took the baby to the nearest hospital, got it diapers and formula, named it Pola after their country, and made sure that the baby was adopted by a lovely Afghan couple. Now, they didn't adopt the girl themselves, but you can be sure that this contingent of soldiers is going to keep a very close eye on the development of this little girl as she grows up, if for no other reason than that this is such an unusual and remarkable story. But what this very real, very recent story tells us is that it's not such a far-fetched story after all. Babies are sometimes found on battlefields. The story behind the opera, Daughter of the Regiment, could have happened. And people say that opera plots are unbelievable. Well, these soldiers become fathers to this little girl whose name is Marie. She grows up and that's where we see her at the beginning of the opera. As the regiment is on maneuvers in Switzerland and they're living there in a little village. Marie almost falls off a cliff while picking flowers, but she's saved by a local peasant named Tonio. Because this is opera, they fall in love, right? But there's a problem. Tonio has to get the entire regiment to agree in order for him to marry her. So he joins the regiment, becoming a soldier himself. This impresses the regiment, and they initially say yes to the Union. But there's a hitch. A local noblewoman, the Marquise of Birkenfeld, discovers that Marie is her long-lost niece. She doesn't think that a military environment is a very good place for Marie, so she takes her into her home with the intention of marrying her off to some nice, rich young man. This leaves Tonio out of the picture. Poor Tonio. Will he get back together with Marie? Will they find true love? Well, this is a comedy, so I think you can guess what happens in the end. Now let me tell you a little bit about the composer Gaetano Donizetti. He was born in Bergamo, northern Italy, and spent much of his early life writing operas for the great Italian opera theaters in Milan, Rome, and Naples. But in 1838, 175 years ago, he was invited to come to Paris, France. Paris was the capital of opera at the time. Every composer in Europe wanted to make his opera career there. France, of course, had plenty of French composers and they dominated most of the theaters. So for an Italian like Donizetti to get a chance at writing an opera for any one of the many opera companies in Paris, it was a dream come true. But Paris demanded that their operas be in French. So here's an Italian composer writing a French opera based on a French story for French audiences. Buongiorno. Bonjour. Buongiorno. Bonjour. Buongiorno. Bonjour. Not only does this take talent and a complete comprehension of two languages, it probably made him just a little bit crazy. Thing of it is, Donizetti was wildly successful in Paris. By 1840, he had six operas playing at four different opera theaters throughout the city. This certainly made many of the local French composers quite jealous. Well, the daughter of the regiment, or La Fille du Régiment, as it's called in French, was a great success. It was funny, it was fresh, it had terrific melodies, and it was just a great evening for everybody who saw it at the Opera Comique. 
Between 1840 and 1917, there were a thousand performances of the opera. It became a tradition that the Opera Comique would present the opera every July 14th, Bastille Day, France's version of Independence Day, because the military plot, the soldiers on stage, and a vivacious young woman in the role of the daughter, Marie, just seemed, well, so patriotic. As they say in the opera, Salut de la France. As you can imagine, with an opera that deals with soldiers and military surroundings, the music involves the kind of music that you would normally hear in that environment. Music has been a traditional part of the military since the time of the Greeks and Romans. In 19th century France, when this opera was written, the march was the main form of military music, as it still is today. There are plenty of attractive marches in this opera, beginning with this one, that the soldiers sing when coming on stage in the first act. There's another march, though, that's associated with the daughter herself, Marie. We hear it in her aria early in the opera when she talks about the regiment and how dear all these guys are to her. But an interesting thing happens to interrupt this march. Marie is singing along to that strong march rhythm when suddenly she breaks off and the music completely changes into a waltz, the most popular dance of the time. In fact, especially in Paris, people were crazy about the waltz. It was called waltz mania and everybody wanted to dance it. So Donizetti was smart to include the waltz in portions of this opera. Listen to how easily he moves from the march to the waltz in Marie's aria. This was the kind of thing that absolutely delighted audiences about the opera. When our hero, Tonio, asks the regiment for permission to marry Marie, and he gets that permission, he breaks out into the most famous aria in the opera, which has the tenor sing nine, count them, nine high C's. This too is a little waltz tune, and it fits Tonio's enthusiasm perfectly. But we can't forget that our composer Donizetti was what we call a bel canto composer. Bel canto is an Italian term that means beautiful song or beautiful singing. It was a style that involved a very simple accompaniment from the orchestra in order not to detract from the singer, the melody being sung. It always featured long, beautiful melodies, especially for the sopranos. In this piece of music, Marie bids farewell to her beloved regiment as she's taken away by her aunt, the Marquise of Berkenfeld. Listen to how simple the accompaniment is. 
Now let's add the melody that Marie sings on top of that simple accompaniment. Isn't that beautiful? Even though The Daughter of the Regiment is a comedy, there are moments in the opera where that bel canto style of the composer, Donizetti, really stands out, and we realize what a great composer he was. The Daughter of the Regiment is a joy. It's fun, it's got some great music, and a silly story that just keeps you grinning from ear to ear. Our production of the opera updates it from the 19th century to the end of World War II, around 1945. So all the costumes and the setting are from that period, with the soldiers dressed in the olive and khaki uniforms from that period. This is one of those operas that can be updated to a period other than the one that was written in, and it works very well. I know you're going to love it. I'm Nick Ravellis, and I'll see you at the opera.